Good morning, YouTubians. It's Kim, it's Ghost, and we are going to be doing the O's of the collection. They were just under 80. I think it's about 78. Pretty sure there was 78 when I counted. Could be more. First one, Oblivion. A great Tom Cruise film. Should have been in 3D, in my opinion. This would have looked great in 3D. Um, lots of like landscapes. You've got Tom Cruise, Morgan Freeman, and a few other people. Um, is set after can't really give it away um, humans are leaving the planet <laughs> try not to give it away um, there's a, a ship outside the atmosphere communicating with Tom Cruise and his partner a woman they patrol borders there's some zones that you can't go into but always not what it seems check that out it's a very good film very good and when I first saw it I didn't see the sort of ending coming very good um, observer and report Seth Rogen's quite a dark comedy this I saw this at the cinema and I was uh, quite surprised you've got a good cash got Ray Liotta who I'm not a big fan of to be fair Michael Pina Anna Faris Anna Faris plays um, the subject of his desires of Seth Rogen's desires um, this is all set in a mall he's a mall cop thinks he's a little bit more Quite violent in places. Quite dark comedy. Oh brother, where art thou? This is uh, set in the 30s, I believe, in America. Chain gang, three escaped convicts. Um, they've gone. They've gone to find like treasure. And it's quite like a farcy thing. You got John Goodman in this. A singing George Clooney. It's a good film. It's uh, was it the uh, Cohen brothers, Ethan and Joel Cohen. I enjoyed that. I like that one. Dapper Dan and all that sort of thing. Uh, occupation, exactly what it is. Um, aliens appear in the sky every night and um, take over the cities and whatnot. And you've got like a small band of people fighting back. One of those. The original Ocean's Eleven. Um, yeah, the Brat Pack. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And then you have the the remake trilogy you've got uh, well the first one's the remake of the the Danny Ocean Ocean's 11 it's called Ocean 11 because uh, it's Danny Ocean who organizes the heist it's a heist movie uh, in case you don't know and uh, the 11 are the the crew the if you can hear my dog snoring you probably can't because it's a directional microphone but if you can I apologize uh, yes it's uh, Danny Ocean and his crew of 11 him included and uh, obviously you get Oceans 12 and Oceans 13 to go up a number each time as the heists get more elaborate. Uh, the first one's very grainy, but I think that's how it's shot. So if you watch this on Blu-ray and you think that's a bit grainy, that's, that's why. And then you have everybody's favourite, Oceans 8, which is the female version of Oceans 11, 12 and 13. Great cast. I didn't mind this. I thought it was pretty good. bit cheesy in places, but I like a heist movie. Sandra Bullock's in this. Um, Kate Blanchett. Anne Hathaway, Mindy Carling, I don't know who that is. Um, uh, Sarah Paulson, not be, uh, not big um, aware well, I don't know what she's done before, Sarah Paulson, uh, so I can't really comment on her. Uh, Rihanna's in this and uh, Helen Bonham Carter. I enjoyed that, I thought it was a good film, but not to everybody's taste. Ocean Waves, this is uh, Jub uh, Studio Ghibli number 16. Um, it took a long time for this to come out. It did get a uh, Italian import release which I did get but then it was all in Italian no English language and uh, subtitles were in Japanese so didn't really, uh, I didn't know that until I bought it <clears throat> uh, this is a, a love story school sort of love story um, and jealousy that sort of thing October Skies uh, yeah set in like a, a coal mine I think it was Coalwood Coalwood the little town uh, yeah Coalwood in uh, Virginia in 1957 it's a, a young boy his father works the mines and uh, he that's a sort of the year Sputnik went up and he, he gets like uh, the the itch to build like rockets and whatnot and it's all about that and that, that like he's fighting the, the father because the father thinks it's, he's wasting his time it's a school teacher sort of egging him on saying yeah you should do it good one of those sort of films you know Odd Couple, exactly what it says on the cover. Odd Couple, Jack Lemmon, Walter Matter. One's a slob, one's like a neat freak. It's just a brilliant pairing. Brilliant. 
Odessa Files. This is about a German journalist that um, is hunting down Nazi criminals. And this is uh, Indicator, release number 84 on the spine at the bottom. And what do you get with this? You get a huge book. Quite, quite a book with this one. Well worth, uh, well worth a purchase. And you get like the original art. That's an awkward angle. <laughs> the original art on there. Uh, that's uh, Voigt, isn't it? Um, John Voigt. The Odd Life of Timothy Green. This is Jennifer Garner, Joel Edgerton, who was in, uh, is it Warrior? The, the one with Tom Hardy, um, that yeah, ultimate fighter. It's been in a few things. Um, they are like childless and they want a child, so uh, they can't have children, should I say. Um, they put a box together, like the, what they want from a child, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like happy families, that's like pictures and whatnot. So they put it in a box and bury it in a garden and the child turns up the next day after a storm. I forget who plays the child. Uh, um, it doesn't matter. Oh, it, in there somewhere. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, child turns up, not what it seems. Odd Thomas, this is a great film. Anton Nielsen, Patton Oswalt, I like Patton Oswalt. Uh, this is a young guy who's like a grill cook, and I think um, Blu ray Bullet Brit did a review on this, if I remember. Go and check him out. Um, yeah, Odd Life, uh, Odd, Life uh, Odd Thomas, he's like a grill cook, and he has he, he has the ability to see the dead and the demons and that walking about. It's such a cool film. Great effects on it as well. And this is a German import. Office Christmas Party. This is a fun film, yeah. Um, it's Jason Bateman being Jason Bateman, like the straight man, but uh, you know he's, everything's funny. And Jennifer Aniston's funny in this. T.J. T.J. Miller. Every scene he's in, he's funny. Um, yeah, it's it's about business that's doing poorly, and well, or the guy is doing poorly, and he has to. He, well, he throws his party against office wishes. I think um, Jennifer Aniston said, you're not having this party. He goes ahead and throws his party, if I remember rightly. And it's just uh, it's one of those epic parties. Very funny. Of Mice and Men. <clears throat> Trying to think what the, uh, the English title was. This is a German release. Um, God, who's the author of this? Um, oh, my English teacher would be going mad at me now. John Steinbeck. John Steinbeck. Great story. You've got Gary Sinise as, uh, is it Lenny or is it George? George is Gary Sinise. Lenny is played by um, John Malkovich. John Malkovich, a little bit, let's say, intellectually challenged. And his brother looks after him and um, the woman in, in red gets, who's like the boss's wife or girlfriend, she gets injured. Does she get killed? I can't remember in the book. I think she gets killed in the book. Great film, great film. Old boy, uh, this is the Josh Brolin version. I know there is another version of it. I don't have this. This is a guy who gets kidnapped and kept captive for 20, I think, is it exactly 20 years? Roughly 20 years. And all of a sudden he's just sort of, he gets let away and uh, all is not what it seems again in his search for the truth. Old Dogs. This is a German release. John Travolta, Robin Williams. Uh, when I first watched this, absolutely loved it. When I watched it recently, it wasn't the best film. There was a great scene though. There is when they're um, when they're getting high and uh, playing golf. It's so funny. But yeah, not as good as I remembered the first time round. Uh, Old Man and the Gun. I haven't got round to seeing this yet. This is uh, Robert Redford. You don't rush a Robert Redford film, in my opinion. You sort of you say it's like a perfect time and place to watch these uh, Movie Edge sent me this in the trade appreciate it Old Man and a Gun Robert Redford Old Yeller and this was sent to me by with a trade obviously with um, Cash at One Steve brilliant yeah I love this film Old Yeller um, difficult to watch with my dogs in the room um, yeah poor Old Yeller Old Faithful Dog Not man, man's best friend in that case. Uh, Oliver. 
gotta pick a party or two boys uh yeah fagan brilliant uh i've read the book recently and um every single version of this misses out huge chunks of the book and but rightly so really you can you can put the whole book in there it's uh there's lots of sort of side stories but this is a great musical and um i'm pretty sure uh fagan um one well not fagan uh one moody who played fagan he won the oscar maybe um i don't know i can't see but a great great film all about like pickpockets and thieves back in the uh, back in the day in london back in the day um oliver this is um oliver and company disney's number 27 of their classics and i, d I don't even think i've seen this one i don't think i have but i can't imagine this sticking to the book quite unusual this is my favorite version of Oliver so far. This is uh, controversially a Roman Polanski film. Um, ben Kingsley is in this. I don't know who the kid is. It uh, Barney Clark. I don't. I've not heard of him in anything since. But this is a absolutely the, the detail in this film. If you like the story of Oliver, um, this Oliver Twist version is a must. It is region free. I think yeah, German import. Plays fine. Beautiful picture quality. And it's just uh, the attention to detail. It goes a lot closer to the book than the uh, Oliver one, than, than that one. Very, very good. Now this one, love this film. Um, Olympus Has Fallen, and then you had London Has Fallen, and I think the next one's Angels Have Fallen, or something like that. It's set on a, um, the Air Force One? I don't know, I, I could be completely wrong. Um, but this one, brilliant they had this is one of those things that they did you know uh, armageddon and deep impact i keep saying that um like hollywood puts out like, two films similar this one and um white house down came out the same roughly the same time this one had a better cast you had aaron heck uh, eckhart uh, morgan freeman and a few other people um dinner mcdermott i think was in this as well um yeah ashley judd ashley judd great film brilliant film in my opinion let's pause it there get the next title out okay next pile and the first one is omega man charlton heston's omega man this is number three of the premium collection from 1971 uh yep yeah, um if you've seen i am legend you kind of know the story the last man on earth you know zombies and all this that and the other um this is i think closer to the book with the book i believe this version is closer and you get a load of art cards and stuff, digital code. But I've already given the digital code away, so you missed it, you missed it. Um, there you go, uh, Charlton Heston. The Omen, Devil Child. Uh, this one, Gregory Peck, uh, Lee Remick. Uh, who was the child? I don't know who the child was. Um, I don't know, I can't remember the child. I saw this in the 70s when I was a kid. It's 1976. So probably about 79 when I think it started coming out on rental. Yeah. Good film to watch when you're a kid. Probably on pirate video somewhere. Um, on Chisel Beach. <laughs> yeah, about an idyllic romance uh, uh, relationship. Then the wedding night approaches and you've been brought up in the old fashioned ways. Suppressed sexuality and all that. On Dangerous Ground. That's got Saucy Ronan in that as well. Just want to mention it. Um, yeah, uh, this is about like a redemption of character, and um, I hate that when the cover slips. Uh, yeah, this is redemption of character. Police officer who's seen it all, you know, it's pimps and thieves and whatnot, and and he finds redemption in the, the most unusual of places. This is um, uh, HMV's premium collection number eighty from nineteen fifty two. Jet Li's the one. I don't know why I picked this up. Is uh, oh, Jason Statham is in this one. That's a really shiny colour. Uh, yeah, Jet Li. I've not seen that one yet. That's a Statham. I must get around to watching that. One hundred and one Dalmatians. Uh, I don't have the one hundred and two, one hundred and one Dalmatians Part Two or anything like that. Um, stick with the classic. This is number seventeen. Cruella de Vil. Uh, 
a great story, great animation. Um, just love it. And I love the live action version as well. Glenn Close and uh, Hugh Laurie's in it. Why haven't they made their way to Blu-ray yet? Come on, Disney. Don't wait for the Disney Movie Club. Release them. But I like that one. Very good. 127 out. I think this came as a book when I bought this. Um, yeah. Not an easy watch with the pen knife. Um, on the road, obviously a road trip movie with jazz and all this. And it's got Vigo Mortensen. Is that right, Dennis? Vigo Mortensen. I might have not said that right. I always say Vigo Mortensen, but that's not right. Apparently that's Vigo Mortensen. But there you go. Dennis from um, Blu-ray Corner. Check him out. Once. Once upon a time in Venice. Uh, I watched this with my wife recently. She hated this. She thought it was the most boring film ever. And I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was... Uh, I just like the, the the feel of the film. I thought it was really good. Got John Goodman in this, and he kind of steals the scene. Bruce Willis. If you want to see Bruce Willis, his ass is a like a skateboarding scene near the start. If you want to see his ass, um, yeah, this was a import from Australia as well. So, once upon a crime. Yeah, when a, a millionaire's murdered hilarity is and you've got you have got to cast it john candy james belushi sybil shepherd george hamilton's in this um this is released from 88 films don't have a lot of 88 films but that's one of them one chance this is james corden and he is um portraying uh, who's that guy paul potts is it paul potts yeah paul potts the the bunny sang ness and dormer on there but it's got talent and he actually made a film bit but the film is really good um yeah is he's like a wannabe opera singer and he goes to italy to learn to be an opera singer but it's like um it's one of those sort of um biopics that overcoming obstacles and stuff you've got Mackenzie crook in this as well Colm meany uh julie waters who's always puts in a good performance but that's a real Feel good film. Check that out. One chance. Region B locked. I don't think this would be out in America. I don't think they would uh, know Paul Potts is or our TV shows. But there you go. That's that one. Uh, one day and Hathaway. One eight seven German release. And I'm pretty sure the title one eight seven is how many times this teacher got stabbed. Um, Samuel Jackson's in this. Uh, not a lot of other people I recognise. Kelly Reynolds, no, Kevin, Calvin Reynolds. I don't know. John Hurd. John Hurd. Macaulay Culkin's dad in Home Alone. Uh, yeah, one eight seven. Not seen it for a long time, but I'm pretty sure it's how many times he got stabbed. I'm starting to lose uh, the memory. But there you go. That's a German release. One Fine Day, Michelle Pfeiffer, George Clooney, a romance, um, yeah, it's a romance film. One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, brilliant Jack Nicholson film. I always, I don't know which is better, this one or The Shining, because um, I saw this, I've seen this more times than The Shining, I re I, this is just a really amazing film, and you've got so many uh, like cameos in this, you've got... Um, uh, Christopher Lloyd from you know, Back to the Future. You got a very young. Um, oh, what's his name? That little guy. Um, played the Penguin in Batman. I can't think of his bloody name now. Little fella. Ah, Danny DeVito. Got young Danny DeVito in this. Oh, Nurse Fletcher. Uh, I think she won the Oscar for this as well. Um, it says it's produced. By Michael Douglas. I don't know if it's the same person. Could be. Uh, yeah, but it's a great film. Of a guy who's just sort of bucking the system. Yes, I said bucking. Bucking the system. Um, thinks he can get off like uh, charges of like, sexual conduct by claiming insanity. So he spends a bit of time in, in the what he calls the cuckoo nest, the, the um, mental health hospital. And, you know... Things don't work out the way he intended. 
especially with the nurse on board, uh, Nurse Ratchet. Uh, one for the money, Catherine Heigl. One hour photo, a brilliant Robin Williams film, creepy as hell. Um, he kind of, he's, he's a one hour developer, a photo, did he even have these anymore? Um, he develops photographs, old film on cameras and um, people take to like, your local pharmacy, drop off the real camera and they say it's ready in an hour. Anyway, he, he develops this film for this family and he kind of thinks they're like his family because he's like seen them grow up through pictures over the years. And so he takes it a little bit too far. Let's just say that. Who's the family? You've got Connie Nelson, Gary Cole, um, Eric LaSalle. That's Eric LaSalle. He was in uh, ER and Coming to America. Um, don't recognize anybody else. Very good, very creepy. Robin Williams film just shows you, he, uh, like comedians, they can be really creepy as well. Like um, uh, Jim Carrey, if he does like like a serious role, they, they can, can be quite creepy. <laughs> One or the other, really funny, really creepy. One million years, um, one year, million years BC. Yeah, uh, Raquel Welsh, Raquel Welsh, Raquel Welsh. Only God Forgives. This is uh, Ryan Gosling. I've not seen this one. I saw the other one the other day with him in um, Drive. I thought that was a pretty good movie. Only the Brave. Oh, this is a harrowing thing. This is Josh Brolin, Miles Teller, Jeff Bridges, Taylor Kish, Jennifer Connelly. Story of um, like firefighters, but they sort of preempt fires. If there's if they know there's gonna if there's a forest fire heading their way, they were like dig a ditch and try and stop it in its tracks. And it, for the most part, it does work. But my God, this is based on a true story. Harrowing what happened to these people. Just harrowing. It's one of the most dangerous jobs, I believe. Only yesterday. Um, Studio Ghibli, this is number 14. Again, this is a film I bought, I imported from Italy because it took so long to get it. And it was all in Italian uh, language and Japanese subtitles, so I didn't know what the hell was going on. And Open Range, that's the English version now, so it does have an English audio on it, by the way. Um, open Range, great cowboy film, modern cowboy film. Um, yeah, just um, Kevin Costner, he killed it as a cowboy. Robert Duvall's brilliant, Annette Benning, well worth the watch. This was a German import. And yes, it plays fine on UK TVs. I think it's region B locked though, so don't know if it's out in America or not. That's that one. Let's pause it for our last pile. Okay, next film, The Open Road. Now, this is Justin Timberlake and Jeff Bridges. And it's about a son trying to track down his father, baseball player. And um, Kate Mara is in this as well. Harry Dean Stanton. A road movie. Operation uh, Chromite. This is about uh, America biting off a little bit more than it can chew when uh, it's, it tries to um, um, get behind enemy lines and uh, it doesn't work out because they're a little bit more sort of savvy than he thinks. Operation Dumbo Drop. Uh, yeah, Mike, uh, not Mike, um, Steve, cashier one. Take me this, thank you, Steve. This is us, um, in case, I didn't mention it before. This is the Disney Movie Club, and you have to be a member in America, living in America, to get these films. So he sends me these, and I send him films that he wants in the UK. Um, Operation Petticoat, great cash. Cary Grant, um, Tony Curtis. It's about um, a guy, well, a guy, he's a commander, and he is. This is a German import, by the way, just not available in the UK. Uh, a commander, he's given this useless crew um, a pink submarine, and it's just about him dealing with that situation. Good comedy. Um, oranges, family relationships, oranges and sunshine. This is uh, Australian import. True story, and this is about a woman discovers about all the the, uh, the children that were sort of just sort of sent off to Australia to live with. Uh, Australian families and you know against the family's wishes you've got Hugo weaving this Emily Watson um, it's one of those sort of dark histories of the UK and I think this is sort of a lot of it's coming to light recently as well but it's woman's sort of uh, fu uh, fueled into trying to put things right 
Arjun Moors. Orphanage. I think this is uh, Guillermo de Toro. It could be. Uh, could be completely wrong. It's so small, I can't even read it. Um, it says an interview with Guillermo de Toro on the extras. So I'm pretty sure it is. It's on the front as well, isn't it? Um, no, he presents it, so he didn't direct it. The others, great twist in this. Could have been an M. Night Shyamalan film. Um, I love it. I just love it. It's a really good, creepy ghost story. And it's not what you not what you think. It's the old lady in the... Oh, creepy as hell. What is it with old women? The Other Berlin Girl. This is a really good story. Um, Henry VIII and um, his multiple wives. And... Uh, but he, uh, what's her name? Natalie Portman. She plays Anne Boleyn, and Scarlett Johansson plays Anne Boleyn's sister. So this is all before Jane Eyre and Anna Cleves and all this lot. And it's oddly enough, because you, you see Eric Banner you, uh, as Henry VIII, and all you picture as Henry VIII is this big, over bloated king in his codpiece. <laughs> uh, you never really imagined him as a young man. But apparently he was always big as a young man as well. But this is a really good, really good uh, retelling or telling of the uh, the era of that time. The other women, um, I think it's really funny comedy. It's uh, and the woman, what's her name? Uh, oh, Nicki Minaj is in this as well. Um, Don Johnson's in this. Uh, Kate Upton, Nicola Costa, the, uh, the and. Nicolaj Costa, the guy who was um, the King Slayer with the golden hand in Game of Thrones, he's in this as well. Who is the woman in this? Um, Leslie Mann. She plays a really good, scorned, crazy woman. Um, her, her husband's cheating on her with Cameron Diaz. This is the story. Um, th th they sort of spark up a friendship because she finds out she's cheating with her she finds out that he's also cheating on her with her and you know the bloke's a scumbag um <laughs> and he plays it really well and it's just a really good sort of love not triangle but like a square bombus or whatever you want to call it our brand is crisis this is a political satire film um didn't get a uk release had to go to um amazon germany to get this um the sites I use, people ask where I get the, like German films, I usually go to Amazon Germany because they're quite cheap, Amazon Germany, and they deliver quite quickly as well. Uh, very rarely I would get a German film from eBay, but uh, I do. Actually, I bought a German film two days ago from eBay. It's on its way. But anyway, our brand of Christ is Crisis. Not the best political film, but Billy Bob Thornton plays um, the opposition. Sandra Bullock is brought in to um, get this candidate through and... It's okay, it's not bad. Not a bad film. Our House. I think this is called Duplex in America. Um, Drew Barrymore, Ben Stiller. Uh, they get this house and or flat, whatever it is. And you've got like a sitting tenant in there, an old woman trying to get rid of her. And uh, it's just really funny. Really, really funny. And again, all is not what it seems. Our Idiot Brother. Exactly what it says. Um, idiot Brother sisters have to look after him um when he's thrown out of his way he lives uh elizabeth banks paul rudd zoe de chanel paul rudd looks different there doesn't he our kind of tra uh, traitor this is a uh, espionage kind of film outcast nicholas cage hayden christensen whoever thought i mean they don't really pull in a big crowd these two anymore um who have thought put them both together uh, yeah outland this is about um a load of deaths on jupiter's moon and uh, there's an old sort of um marshal that investigates the deaths this is um hmb premium collection number 19 from 1981 we've got sean connery in this uh peter boyle is in this i think as well out of sight i love the, the tone of this film you at the start, it's very, uh, it's set in Detroit at the start. It's very, the, the sort of um, steely blue, sort of greys and stuff like that because it's industrial. And uh, it's like a road movie. This is, and as it gets like further to the coast on the other side of America, the colours are a lot warmer and, and sort of 
I like that feel of the film. Uh, it's the story of an escaped convict, George Clooney, um, and he's being pursued by, well, I say he's being pursued by uh, Jennifer Connolly, who's a US Marshal, but he kidnaps her. And it's a relationship that pursues from that. Outbreak. Um, Australian import. I don't know if this has a UK release. It might do. Uh, saw this at the cinema. Uh, people were watching it. If you've seen this film, like the cinema scene over this coffin, people were coughing all through this film. <laughs> Christ, people. Love that cover. Uh, yeah, it's about an outbreak. Uh, Dustin Hoffman plays it really good. Um, Rini Russell was his strained wife. Morgan Freeman is his uh colonel in the army because he, he plays I think he plays a colonel and he plays a colonel i don't know but he's above him so he must not be a colonel um and anyway uh the story is there's an outbreak in a small town and he's uh dustin often tries to cure it in this town they just want to bomb it and get rid of it you've got uh what's his name uh sutherland uh, donald sutherland yeah donald sutherland who's he wants to bomb the city, uh, the little village as well, but Morgan Freeman's sort of more going towards the side of, uh, side of Dustin Hoffman. He wants to cure everybody. Um, big cover-up. Kevin Spacey's in this. I think this is like one of his earlier roles. Very good in that. Outlaw. Uh, this is about a guy who comes back from the army and um, he just sees that it's like a lawless England. Uh, like youths and knife crime and people don't give a crap anymore about anybody else so he, he sets up like a vid vigilante team and they go out and fight crime for themselves it's really good you've got uh, Danny Dyer in this not big fan of Danny Dyer by any means but um, he's good very good in this Bob Hoskins and Sean Bean are very very good they're all in it for their own reasons 8 Lord Josie Wells um, no it doesn't have a release on its own but I made that cover um, yeah uh, Clint Eastwood his family are murdered so he exacts revenge and I think this is Sandra Locke I think this is one of her first films that she was in this is from like 1976 about 76 yeah Sandra Locke Out of the Past this is uh, Robert Mitchum playing the pirate eye he falls in love with uh, a gambler's uh, ex-girlfriend number 79 from 1947 Outsiders Gang Warfare Overboard, great comedy. This uh, Goldie Horn, Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell tricks Goldie Horn. Kind of, I say, would it get made today? But it did, it got remake. Um, uh, yeah, he tricks her into believing because she falls off a boat. She's like a snooty, snobby woman. Nobody, nobody likes her. She's the coin of fame, just up her own backside, you know, one of those sort of people. And uh, he's like a hard working um, carpenter doing out something in a boat I think like a closet or something anyway she bumps bumps her head goes overboard he rescues her or she washes up on his shore I can't remember how they come to meet after the accident but he takes her in and says oh you're you're my wife and uh, he gets her to sort of live the life of his wife looking after his horrible children and anyway they fall in love with each other she becomes like the person that she should have always been sort of really heartwarming person and um, there's a little bit of side story of her husband who wants her dead and it's nice a nice heartwarming film and then the remake told you they, I said they wouldn't remake it but they did but they swapped the roles uh, Anna Faris and uh, Eugenio Derbez I don't know um, this one I've not seen this version yet but I'm looking forward to it this is a German release because it didn't get a UK release obviously I think it's released in the UK. Um, yeah, and the American one was region locked. I see on Blu-ray.com, Sony are asking people what they want on 4K, and everybody's saying, like, um, panic room. How about we get it on Blu-ray first, eh? Sony. Overlord. Shoved it in a black case. This would look good in a red case as well. Um, I love this film. I thought this was really good. The don't want to give too much it's a war film with zombies well like zombies like um genetically created people i would say more than zombies but they are dead so i don't know uh yeah very good very good quite jumpy in places as well over her dead body or is it over my dead body i think it's over her dead body because it's paul rudd 
um, he was dating Eva Longoria, um, Eva Longoria Parker now, apparently. Um, she dies, he then gets another girlfriend, Lake Bell. Um, and Eva Longoria comes back as a ghost to haunt her, to try and get rid of her, because it's her boyfriend. And uh, yeah, really nice, fun, Romy commy ghost story. Over the top, cheesy 80s. I mean, this guy, <laughs> he just goes from town to town, arm wrestling. He does that. There's no way he's going to beat that guy on the back. But he does. Um, yeah, good. Good Stallone film. Oxford Murders. This is... John Hurt, Elijah Wood, um, girl gets murdered in the Oxford University and um, you got Elijah Wood, he's sort of new, new student, John Hurt is a professor and there's a load of sort of clues and like mathematical clues and they've come together, team up to uh, try and solve it, it's more than one murder, it's like a, a string of murders that happen, Oxford murders, Australian import, the last on the list. Oz, the Great and Powerful, saw this at the cinema, loved it, I thought it was really good. It's like a continuation of, um, although it's more of an original story of um, Wizard of Oz, of how the witches became came to be and the, the, the wizard came to be. It's really nice. And I like the way it went from uh, like black and white into colour like it did in the original. Nice homage. 3D, 3D is really good in this as well. So there you go, that was about 80, 70, 78, 80 films. Of the O's, thank you so much for watching. P's and X's, I think there's a lot more P's and O's, and when we get to the S's, I might have to film that. I'll do it as one video, but I'll probably have to film that over like three or four days, because I think there's probably about 400 S's. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment, put a thumbs up, um, subscribe if you're not. There's no charge, honestly, uh, and I don't put adverts, I don't monetize my channel, so there's no adverts in there. All you're gonna get is videos. Uh, I do these videos as well, not to show off the collection, but to try and make it aware films like this, like The Oxford Murders, they are available on Blu-ray, so uh, the more people that buy Blu-ray, the longer it's gonna keep going. As simple as that. That's my motives. Take care, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.